Okay, listen up, friends. Have you ever just had a day? Oh my goodness. It is literally 11 p.m. right now, and I'm just sitting down to vlog. I don't even have my blanket on yet. I am exhausted. Today was so weird. Um, I just struggled at work all day. Had one primary task to work on, and it just did not go according to plan at any step of the way. I ended up staying an, extra, an hour late at work, and then bringing my work computer home with me, and I've been working on it, this project, until right now. So, ugh, not what I thought my Friday would be. How are you doing? Let me know in the comments. How was your Friday? How is the beginning of this weekend treating you? So, Milky Way Matthew here. Hello, everyone. This is day number nine of the Peter Mon Vlog Challenge. What up? And it's Friday night. It's December 11th, which means... Um, we have a High School Musical, the Musical, the Series, Holiday Special, and I haven't even checked to see what the runtime on that bad boy is. What? <sighs> so, I'm very tired. Probably, this will not be a long vlog. I watched a vlog of Peter's yesterday, and I re remembered, because he said this probably isn't going to be very long, I remembered that he says that a lot, and then it's like decently long. I think that this one actually probably won't be very long. Because I'm yawning, I'm, I'm very tired, and all I want to do is get in my PJs and listen to my audiobook and brush my teeth. That sounds so nice. And to take my glasses off and stop looking at a screen... Oh my goodness, I've been looking at the screen so much today. I'm going to take a drink here, so I would encourage you to pause and do the same. This is another um, Tervis that I haven't showed off before. This is a gift to me last Christmas uh, from some very good friends. Star Wars Episode Nine, Tervis. Do you see this right here? This is how tired I am. What is, what is happening? That wasn't enough. Hold on. That was better. See if you can do a little better with that. Take a little bit more. <sighs> Keep breathing. So I was just on my way transitioning into vlogging. I was talking with Michael Poff and um, man, what a dude. He was making me laugh. Um, but <laughs> what did he say? I don't know. He said something really funny about, um, oh, he was telling me that I could sleep in tomorrow. And I was like, no, Michael, I have too much to do. I have a busy day tomorrow. I have to do this and this and this and this and this. He's like, no, Matthew, you can sleep in because guess what? You're worthy of sleeping in. You're worthy of taking a breath. And I realized he was kind of, um, mocking me in a sweet way. And it was funny, um, in a friendly way, I should say. So anyway, just remember, you're worthy of breath. <sighs> I tried to keep breathing today. I will say I think that that's something I did succeed at is that I kept breathing. Um, I did my best to stay hydrated. Um, you know what I've noticed is that it's hard to stay hydrated when we're wearing masks all the time at work because I, I just am not, you know, when you have that, that mask on, I'm not thinking about you know, taking it down or up to put my water bottle in and take my sips like I used to. Um, so I used to, actually, we, you know, I think I talked about this before, but we used to have this button that my coworker would push and it would make this noise and it would remind us all to drink water. But yeah, that's uh, why, you know, I need to get a gong. So... 
what are you doing this weekend? You got any plans? I don't really have, I have zero weekend plans other than working. So I'm sure I'll do something. I know, you know here's the thing. So um, I'll do something fun. I'll connect with some friends. Uh, I want to call my friend Aaron. I haven't talked to him in far too long. So my plan is at some point this weekend to call Aaron, catch up, connect. Mm. But really, other than that, you know, I've got some work to do. I, my goal would be for tomorrow to be done with all my work stuff by like, you know what? By like, ooh, one. That that that's ambitious, probably. But yeah, that I mean, that would be so nice to be done by one. And then just like the afternoon, I don't know what the weather's gonna be like. I wish it was gonna be nicer out, like warm, like a little bit warmer, or at least not raining. Today it rained all day, which I was at work all day, so it didn't matter, but. I would like to go for a walk or even just sit outside and listen to an audiobook or um, read. I do have a couple books. I actually have a list of books that I want to finish up before the end of the year, which, you know, is only like a handful of days away. So I should probably get on that. I'm fidgeting uh, with my lens cap. Um books that I want to finish before the end of the year. Sula, I still haven't finished that. I think I have like only like 20 or 30 pages, but I need to finish that. I want to. Winter of Our Discontent. I started reading a summer of 2017, I think, and I've been reading it very slowly, obviously. And I know like that sounds impossible, but you know, in a way, um, it is, I suppose. It's, you know, obviously I won't have the effect of reading it all in, at once, but, you know, it's, I, in my opinion, for me, I don't mind that. I, I haven't let it go ever in that I don't, I'm not enjoying it. I have always enjoyed it. Um, it's just one, a lot that I, I read that one before bed. I kind of go through seasons where I'll read that as I'm laying, lying in bed before I fall asleep. But the thing is, I can only get through, like, a page or two before falling asleep. I just don't, I, yeah, when I lay down, uh, I'm gone. I tried to listen to my audiobook a little bit the other night before I went to sleep. And I woke up and I was like, I have no idea what's happening. And I, I think I listened to, like, a whole chapter, um, which is probably, like, ten minutes. I think I, like, fell asleep right away and it played for ten minutes before I woke up and realized it was still playing. So... Yeah, but what else, is there anything else I want to really want to finish before the end of the year? Yeah, some of my nonfiction books I would like, I would like to finish up, but, um, yeah, I really wish that, um, I would have been able to do the audio version, uh, audio book of B Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, or Fru what is it called? Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, A Beautifully and Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green, sequel to An Absolutely Remarkable Thing. I really wanted to read that this year. I really wanted, I was looking forward to it. I wanted to do the audio book because I did the audio book the first time for the first book. I really enjoyed that. So I wanted to do the audiobook, but it was only, you know, they only have released so far the uh, it on Audible. I don't do Audible. I have Scribd and then just library um, audiobooks. And it's not available anywhere but Audible, which is annoying. So just waiting for that to change so that I can listen because I don't want to. Yeah, I don't think I want to pay for it. I guess I could have, you know, but I don't, I mean, I, it's not that like I really had, again, I did most of my audiobook in the car when I was driving places and I don't drive anywhere anymore, um, you know, because of the pandemic and also my car is just like, I don't, I try not to go out of town. So I go, well, that's not true. I go 
at least once a week I go to one town over that's like literally three miles away and it, the top speed of getting there is 45 so that's that's reasonable with my car but otherwise I, yeah, I don't really get out of town much which you know is cr like thinking back on that is crazy because I used to go downtown Chicago like maybe once a month at least and I would go I used to go like well weekly to Chicago for to Hyde Park for classes I used to drive every week to Hyde Park um, so that was a lot of listening you know then though I feel like I did do some audiobooks on the on that way on that trip but it was a lot of podcasts yeah a lot of film spotting if you're into movies anyone out there into movies if you are and you've never checked out film spotting check out film spotting it's a great podcast um one of like the oldest film podcasts there is and they're just fun people and they do fun stuff i've i've discovered so many movies um from them and learned so much it, yeah so highly recommend film spotting i should check well see this is the problem be like ooh, i should listen to film spotting again but then it's like well then where, when am i going to be listening to my audiobooks you know i don't i can't really listen much at work you know, there's a couple tasks that I have that are like data entry, and at that point I can listen to something, but the rest of the time, um, I can't. I'm too involved in uh, meetings and things like that, so. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not driving. What else, what else am I going to do this weekend? Do I have anything that I'm hoping to watch this weekend? I don't really know. Well, I will probably watch the holiday special, which I will give you an update on. Do not worry. I know you're all waiting on bated breath. So, yeah, uh, you know, just take a moment here to say if you are new to Milky Way Matthew, Welcome. Thanks for coming on over. Hope you um, are doing well. Hope you're having a nice Friday or, you know, chances are you're going to be watching this on Saturday or after because it's, it's probably, I'm going to be lucky if this posts on Friday, which is kind of crazy to think about, but you know, I'm making it. It's still Friday while I'm making it. So yeah. Anything interesting happen at work today? Oh. Um, what was that TikTok my coworker was showing me? It was a it was uh <laughs> I know what it was. It was this guy doing Jane Boston talk. That's what it is. Jane Boston talk, like Jane Austen, but Boston. And he reads Jane Austen with a Boston accent. And as he's saying his introduction, he says, it's time for Jane Boston talk. Where, and I didn't, I don't know if I heard that part. And then he said, uh, where I'm going to, what did he say? Boston. Read Jane Austen with a Boston accent. With a Boston accent. And I heard on a bus with an accent. So it goes along and he starts reading. And I said to my coworker, why is he not on a bus? And she rightfully just stared at me like, what are you talking about? And I said, he said he was going to be on a bus reading it with an accent. And then we went back and realized that I misheard with a Boston accent as on a bus with an accent. So we had a good little chuckle over that. But I don't know who he is or what he's doing, but, you know, reading Jane Austen. So that's, that's good for him. 
Oh. Never read Jane Austen. Have you read Jane Austen? Is it like a must read? I don't know. Um, I read Hawthorne for the first time this year. I read Scarlet Letter. I really enjoyed it. You know, not the easiest of reads, but um, I really enjoyed it. So, I'm sure, I, I kind of feel like Jane Austen might be harder to read than Hawthorne, though. I don't know if that's true. Is that just an assumption I have? Probably. Or maybe, you know, maybe there's, maybe that's the wrong question. I don't know. But I definitely think, um, I definitely think I would like to read Pride and Prejudice at some point. I just don't know when. I feel like I'm not in a hurry for that. It's not like a bucket list thing. Like if I never do it, I don't know that I would be that disappointed. I hope that I'm wrong, you know, and that at some point I realize, oh, I have to, and then I do it and get it, you know, experience that and it, it's wonderful. But I, oh, see, like, here's the thing. I almost feel like I would, and I know this isn't even like the right thing, you know, but I would almost rather, like right now, I would rather read Little Women than I would read Pride and Prejudice, which I know is not like the same. I get that. But if I was going to do one or the two, one or the other, I would probably choose Little Women right now. What are you reading? Let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to check that out. Do you have anything that you're trying to finish up before the end of 2020? Do you have any goals for reading in 2021? I will kind of think I want to set a goal for 2021. Um, honestly, I feel like... Um, I have read very few books in 2020. Um, yeah, not as many as I would like to have read. If I had to guess, I would say, which like I need, I, here's the thing. I know I have a handful of ones that I'm, that I will finish up before the end of the year, which will like kind of push me over. I don't know. I'll figure it out at the end of the year, I guess. I'm not going to guess, but it's not a ton. It's not a ton. It's like, it's going to be under 20. So, um, I know, well, like Peter, Peter reads like crazy. Is it, wasn't his goal for like a hundred books or something? I don't know. Something crazy like that. Um, so, I mean, you know, but he's, he's a master of listening to audiobooks, and that's just not, um, that's not something I have in my rhythm of life right now. So I'm also an extrovert. So it's hard. Reading can be really draining. Reading can be really draining because, you know what I will say? Here's what I'll, here's what I'll talk about for a minute. Back when we quarantined earlier this year and like we went into, uh, you know, we had a stay at home order here in Illinois um, my friends that live in my neighborhood, um, and I kind of quarantined together. I was at their house more than I was. I would basically, I would be at my house to sleep and to work online. And then I would go to their house like in the middle of the afternoon and I would be there till late in the night. Um, and we instituted a weekly reading sit where we would, on Monday nights, we would have our uh, our reading sit, and we would just sit in the living room and have very, very quiet, soft music playing, and with, like without words or anything. It was just like mood music, and we would all sit out there and read in the same room. I miss that. I really miss that. Maybe I need to try to bring that back. Um... Not Monday nights, though, because... Actually, when would we do that? I have no idea. But anyway, as an extrovert, that made reading so much less taxing. It made it a lot more enjoyable. Um, and, and that's where, like, you know... I, I always have said, like, I can study better in a full library. Like, in college, I would always... Like, studying in a room by myself... Not, not great. Now, probably the downfall of that was I would probably go to the library with my friends and then not get a ton of work done. 
But even just being like in a place like now, if I can go somewhere like a coffee shop and work or write or uh, read, I can I can get way more done than if I'm just sitting in my house by myself. So yeah, that's part of my problem with reading right now is if I come home at night and I want to read, I'm just like tired. These are all my excuses right now. So anyway, but I want to change that in 2021. So I got to figure out what habits I need to develop and figure some things out. But what are your goals? What are, you know, what's on your must read list for 2021? I just started listening to this audiobook randomly because I was at work and I had some data entry stuff to do and I was like, why am I not listening to an audiobook? So I pulled up Scribd. I don't find Scribd terribly intu intuitive and I've had a hard time finding things that I like that are on my Goodreads. Like I want to listen to this list. I can't find those audiobooks on there, which I probably have a really weird, I, my, my list is really weird. Like niche nonfiction things that probably don't even have audiobooks so it's not their fault probably but anyhow yeah so kind of got derailed there basically found this audiobook it's a um a children's novel um which i quite like um, I'm not at all opposed to reading books that are for, obviously, young adults. YA, um, you know, I have a friend that always says, YA is a, is a genre, not a reading level. And that's so true. Um, but I think, you know, in so, at some level, it's that's also true of, um, you know, middle fiction. I don't know what it's called. Um, you know, at the library, it's called J for juvenile most most often but um the thing is you know it's probably not as like grammatically challenging as some like adult fiction it's probably not um maybe the vocabulary is not as extensive as some adult fiction but really I mean, like, this one I'm reading right now, there's some, like, really weird um, kind of augmented reality, sort of, like, what is what is really happening here? It's some pretty, like, heady concepts for middle schoolers. Um, so, anyway, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, and I'm maybe about halfway through. So, I'll finish, you know, I'd like to finish that up here. Uh, maybe even over the weekend and um, and then maybe find some uh, time to to read uh, some other books that I want to finish up before the end of the year so yeah so audiobooks are fun reading is fun yep so I'm just like getting settled in. I'm so ready to sleep. Are you finding that you're at the end of this week? Are you rested enough? Did you get enough rest this week? Um, my week was a lot like longer and more draining than I anticipated. Like I feel like last Friday on one hand was five minutes ago. On the other hand, I literally feel like it was a different lifetime. And I think that's because last Friday was not a challenging day. It was a smooth day. It was a relaxed day. And today was very challenging. It was very challenging. So I am looking forward to chilling a little bit but I definitely have definitely have some work you know to do but that's good it's good and then Monday will come and I will 
I'll do my things that make me well. Spend some time writing. I mean, actually, I'm really looking forward to Monday because um, I'm going to work on rewrites for the last chapter of my book. And um, then I'll probably, if I, um, yeah, then at that point, I will probably start some edits from my friend who's serving as my preliminary editor. And yeah, I'll start kind of combing through the editing side of things. And then if I still have some more time, my goal is four hours on Monday. If I still have some more time, I will probably spend a little time writing an, uh, 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 on another project. I have two other things that I, I'm not sure. Well, that's not true. I kind of, I mean, one of my downfalls is like just committing to one thing and only working on that. So I have two things that are very different that I really want to write. One of them feels like I really just need to get this done because I know I'm never, I will always be frustrated if I do not write this. So part of me wants to just like try and plow through it as fast as I can because I don't think it would take a terribly long time to write like, like maybe another year to get through that. Um, the other one is definitely like I don't have figured out yet, but it would be maybe a little bit more special and more like um, coming from my heart. But I also, that the messiness of like not knowing, it, that makes that like more challenging and kind of scary. So I don't know, I like obviously in my mind, I'm like, okay, I could, you know, if I'm writing for six hours, if I get to the point, my goal is to get to the point where I can write for six hours um, on Monday. And if I spent three hours on each thing, that would be great. Um, but I don't know if that's even smart. So I don't know. This is just a time of exploring. So what are you doing um, creatively? Letting me know in the comments. What are you exploring? What are you trying? What are you experimenting with? And let me know. Let me know. Let me know. As I was leaving uh, my work an hour later than I was supposed to, I just was like, this is what I was doing. <sighs> and it felt so good. So, you know, if you need to do that, that's okay. You know, maybe like, you know, I feel like that is, can be interpreted as a rude sound if you do that to someone. But there's something really, I don't know, for me it's really satisfying and just like, <sighs> and sighing. And <sighs> Letting that come out naturally. So if you need to do that, take a moment and do that. Um, if you don't, that's okay too. Maybe you've had a peaceful day. It's been pleasant. And if so, I'm very happy for you. And um, it, that, that would bring me joy to remember that uh, not everyone... Well, here's the truth. This is what I, I thought multiple times today. And this is what, like, okay, so now I'm having, like, a spiral of thoughts. At multiple times today, I thought, you know what, there are people who are experiencing real bad things. I'm not actually experiencing anything bad. I'm just experiencing challenges and frustration and stress. And those are not really, like, bad things, you know? And I think there's two ways to look at that. One is where my mind then goes is to guilt and be like, oh, you shouldn't feel bad, blah, 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 blah. I don't think that's a, that's like my inner problems trying to work themselves out. I think the best way to like recognize is that yes, other people are experiencing actual bad things, but I am experiencing, oh my goodness. So <laughs> hold on, my... I'll be right back. My computer for work is making noise.
so funny. So here I am. Woo! Um, what was I talking about? Does anyone remember? Oh yeah. So like, not try. You know, like not letting myself just be like, oh, you know, you're you're terrible for feeling like this is such a hard day because other people have it worse. I don't think that's appropriate. Um, or healthy. I think the, the like the healthy thing, the good option is recognizing that other people are maybe are experiencing things that are much more intense and real and like actual suffering, but that uh, I am experiencing some legitimate mild form of um, even if it's just an inconvenience, you know. Um, but that's a real thing. That's a real experience I'm having. So I don't have to discount, I don't have to discount my mildly, insignificantly frustrating bad Friday just because other people are experiencing worse things. Um, but that perspective that other people are experiencing worse things can, one, remind me that I'm not alone, and two, make me grateful for the things that are good and, um, yeah, I think just bring me to, bring me to a place of more mindfulness. And again, like part of, this is what I find with myself. Part of what, one thing that always helps me get out of my head when I'm like having a day like this, which I can easily then just be like, oh, everything's terrible, is getting the attention off of myself can typically be the thing that um, helps me to find joy and peace. Which, like, maybe vlogging is not a great way to do that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, like, maybe, you know, I, and maybe it is. I don't know. But I guess, like, it, there is some way that, I guess... If I'm not careful, uh, vlogging can just be a very selfish thing because I'm just sitting here talking about myself, thinking about myself, and, you know, then feeling good when other people are thinking about me and, and watching what I'm saying, you know. So that's something to be careful of, I guess, that I've, I'm learning here even in this 14-day challenge here on day number nine that, like, it's probably not good for me if my perspective about, you know, in these videos is just all about me and everything. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so this weekend I need to turn the attention off of me for a little while. That would be good for me. So there's my challenge for all of us over the next couple of days is... Um, if you're, if you're experiencing something, I'm not saying like, don't feel sorry for yourself. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you're, feel like you're spiraling, see if you can, um, put your attention for, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour on someone else. And it, it doesn't even have to be like, you know, like fixing somebody else's problems or, you know, like addressing it. It could just be um, listening to someone else talk for five minutes, which is probably what I need to do when I'm sitting here talking to you all for like so long every night, but it's fun. I'm having a, I'm having a good time, um, but definitely am tired. So I should probably wrap it up because I said it was going to be a short video. We're here at 34 minutes, um, so so let me call it for tonight. Let me take one last drink of water. Hydrate, people, hydrate. Water is life. So let me say this. If no one else has said this to you today, I'm also going to be saying this to myself tonight. If no one else has said this to us today, we are loved we are important, 
we have value beyond what we produce. We are worthy of a second chance. We are worthy of having our shoulders down away from our ears. We're worthy of a nice big full breath. We're worthy of sighing. We're worthy of staying hydrated. And um, we're worthy of treating ourselves with kindness. And we're worthy of turning the attention off of ourselves as well. So thank you for sharing that moment with me. Thanks for watching this video. If you watch this all the way to the end, wow, you are a saint of saints. Go ahead and comment down below um, silver pathos, because I just looked up at my hanging plant, which is a silver pathos. That probably desperately needs to be watered, but it looks great, so it's probably fine, right? I don't know. So comment Silver Pathos, thank you so much. And I will check in with you tomorrow night when I will be here back on the Peter Mullen Vlog Challenge. I hear the train, it makes me nostalgic for my childhood and growing up. That also means I'm up past my bedtime because I should be laying in bed feeling my bed rattle. So get some rest, get some rest. I will talk to you soon. Much love. Bye-bye.